guys can you, can you guys hear that I think uh, mighty mouse is talking to me and I think he's saying it's time for some new brake pads Well, so as you guys just heard, Little Mighty Mouse here is in need of some new brake pads, which I figured is a good thing to do this now, and this to show up now, because I'm gonna be throwing uh, these behemoths on here before too long, and I do wanna have good stopping power with these 32 inch black waters. So I say it's high time to uh, put new brake pads on. So these are the original OEM brake pads that came on the machine, the original ones when I bought it. And I believe I am right at 1,600 miles. Let me check here real quick. Uh, let's see here. Just under 1,600 miles. Which I would say that's pretty good life for a machine like this, especially with the mud I tend to get into from time to time. I got these uh, Severe Duty centered brake pads here from Race Driven, as you can see. Not a sponsor, but uh, pretty good price for these guys. And I did go back and forth between getting a, a heavy duty centered pair of brake pads or actually going with a set of brass brake pads, which when you're in the mud constantly and you get all that grit in there, uh, brass brake pads will last a long, long time. However, they do not have the stopping power as you know your more traditional brake pads do and so i figured with the big old 32s i'm throwing on here i'm going to play it safe and go with uh a more traditional kind of brake pad like these centered ones instead of going with the uh, brass ones because i want to be able to stop plus we'll be able to end compare and see how long these last maybe once i go through a set of these i will try a set of the brass ones so we can do some comparisons and see how they do so anyway there's not a whole lot involved here with changing the front with changing the brake pads at least on the front i don't think my rear need changed yet but we'll still tear into it just as if they do so i can still show you how to change because the rear brake pads are a little different than the front plus they're a little bit harder to get to so in order to get to the brake pads obviously we're gonna have to jack the machine up we're gonna take our tires off so once they do that I will catch back up with you. All right, so we got our tire off here. The first thing I'm gonna do is take and actually turn my wheel so I can get at this stuff a little bit better. So we'll just give her a quick little turn here. And that's that. Uh, first thing we gotta do is take this little plastic uh, guard off and they're just two 10 millimeter bolts. And that guy will fall to the ground, your screws will, bolts will go flying. There's the other one. And then there are two 17 millimeter bolts here that'll come out to take your brake caliper off. We'll just pull that up and around and set it on top that'll give us access to our brake pads there this one's already falling out as you can see there is not a whole lot of pad left on that brake pad a little bit but she was down to the squealers so before we take this other brake pad off we need to compress the piston in here in our caliper so that the new uh, pads will go on and be able to fit over our uh, rotor so all we're going to do to do that is take our small uh, C-clamp. We'll wind her down. So you can see this one is the one I usually use for hard uh, objects. It's a little bent. It's a little twisted. 
just a little bit, but it'll work good for these brakes. We're just going to slip that over here over our pad, and then we'll just slowly give her some cranks. She'll stay on. It's a problem with it being twisted. Come on, stay on there. And we'll slowly turn that piston, or press that piston back in. So the fronts are just like your typical car, truck, brake caliper, they work the same way. You'll see when we get to the rears though, they're a little bit different. Once we have that, we're going to take our C-clamp off and we'll grab our new brake pads. Cute baby attack! Oh, the internet is flooded with cuteness. Smile, Kyla. Hey, smile. Blah, 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 blah. No! <laughs> that was a close save. Well, we know how you feel about being in front of the camera, don't you? <laughs> As you guys can see, the uh, new pads are quite a bit more uh, pad than the old pads, obviously. Brand new. Not so new. 1,600 miles worth of trail and mud. Oversized tires. Again, I still don't think that's too awful bad. Now, I know guys that are in mud 24-7 when they're riding go through these pads a lot quickly, but at 1,600 miles, I'm not going to complain. These guys aren't that expensive to replace, so I think we're doing pretty good. So now it's simply a matter of slipping in our new pads, which with this little guy here can be tricky. You want to feed that in through first. Line it up how the old one came out. Which sometimes, I don't know if you guys can see, they just have these little metal retainer clips in there that help keep the play from the brake pad so they're not slapping around in there. Sometimes it can be a little bit of a pain to get these little ears started in there. So if you just take your time, eventually you'll get them worked in. You might have to get a screwdriver and pry them. But they will go in. There, see that side went in. That side's in, we're gonna push that clear and tight. Same thing here with the other pad. Of course, making sure that our pad material is facing each other and you don't put them on backwards. We're also really gonna squeal at you. And everyone's gonna think, who's this moron riding down the trail? There's one side. This other side's gonna give me difficulties. So if the side's giving difficulties, I'll just take a pair of channel locks and get on here, give her a squeeze. That usually gets them to go in. Yep, like that. Then it's just a matter of sliding the caliper, sliding the caliper, sliding the caliper back over the rotor and rebolting everything fast. Just like that, we'll throw our wheel back on, go through the other side in, and the front will be done. It's only going to take about 15-20 minutes per side, so within half hour, 40 minutes, you can have the brake pads swapped on the front. I know I see a lot of questions concerning the rear brake pads and how to replace them. So I'll get this wheel back on, load this guy back down to the ground, get the rear jacked up, and I'll meet you back there. Now I think the main reason why there's so many questions on changing the rear brake pads on the Pioneer 500 has to do with the location of them. I know it's hard to see because it's dark, but as you can see this has a single rear brake that's actually mounted on the rear drive shaft that brakes both back wheels at the same time using the drive shaft. So just the simple fact that she's tucked way in there where it can be hard to get at makes a lot of people question how to change the brake pads. Now luckily the, brake, the rear brake pads don't wear near as fast as the front, and you're liable to go through two, three sets of front before you got to change the back. So I don't know if mine actually needs changed, but I got the new brake pads here. We're going to go ahead and change them, just so I can do this video for you guys in case the time has come for you to change your rear brakes. So just like the front, we're going to go ahead and jack her up. We're going to take this side 
wheel off and we'll see how things are looking. Now, upon initial glance here, we might actually benefit from popping this rear shock off as well. But we'll hit that road when we get there. Once we get this off, we'll see what we have to work with. And just so you guys know, this is the first time I'm digging into the rear brakes of a Pioneer 500. So I'm liable to learn just as much as you guys will learn from this video. So hopefully it should go smooth. All right, guys, I'm going to do my best here to try to get you in here to see what's going on. It's going to be hard because we've got every other thing in the way here. But I got the wheel off. I may end up taking the shock off just so I can get better view for you guys, but you shouldn't have to take this off. You can get in there pretty easily without. But for what we're going to have to do to remove this caliper, if I get my light to stay, is this... Uh, let me see. Let me go to the other side. I might be able to show you better. So here you guys can see the whole rear brake caliper. It's this whole thing right here. And this is only held on with two bolts. But the problem is just the sheer size of this makes it hard to work on. Plus you have the park and brake cable. That's what's here on the end runs down. Uh, quick note, make sure you guys have the park and cable or the park and brake off when you're working on this. Just to give you a little extra slack. So make sure you uh, block the front wheels if you have this off the ground like I do. But there is the uh, rear brake right there. You can see the rotor actually attaches to the rear drive shaft. So the first step I'm thinking we're going to have to do is to get the caliper loose is where there's a bolt right here and then a bolt right here. These two bolts here which look to be 12 millimeters. This might be. Nah, those are probably, those are 12s. And that should bring this loose and I'm thinking that we should be able then to pull this out if we got enough slack in our cables and work on it here. Hopefully we don't have to take the battery box or anything out. I don't think we can. Worst case scenario, we got a nice big hole over there on the other side. We can uh, pull the other tire off and reach through from the other side. Like I said, this is my first time uh, tackling these as well. So I'm going to learn just as much as you do. And hopefully through this video and this process of doing this, I'll eliminate all the stuff that doesn't work. So we know the best way that does work to change these. All right, guys, we're getting these bolts out. I wanted to show you here real quick one of the but easier ways I found to get these out if you have access to this as you can see here I have a swivel head my 12 millimeter with a nice long extension so I can work at it here from the rear and that worked on the top one too and that's a lot easier than trying to fight in here or down here with your ratchet you can get at it, get at it pretty easy that way so again I recommend using a nice long extension with a swivel head for removing those bolts all right, guys, we'll see how this uh, view gets you in there to see. I got them bolts loose, so I'm going to come back over here on the other side now. And this guy should come off. So, there we go. Now, the best thing to do then, I think, would be to come over from this side where I have the camera. And you should be able to work on stuff through that whole fairly easy I don't know if I can bend it up here ah, I guess you could do this too I guess if we were to take the shock off then we would be able to get at these pretty easy but I bet you we can do it without taking the shock off all right so I did take this shock loose just to get it out of the way to give you guys a little better view, I, you shouldn't have to take it off to replace these. Now one thing about these, about this rear brake is it is different. The uh, piston inside, it's not the kind like we did in the front. You can't take the C-clamp and press it in to take off the slack. This is actually one of the kind that uh, you have to turn. So what we're going to do is pop this bolt out, pop this bolt out back here, and slide this whole thing back off so we can get the brake pads easier and then we'll be able to get to the piston in here and be able to twist that back in all right guys as you can see here i got this pulled off and as i told you guys these uh, rear brake pads aren't even close to needing changed yet but since i got the new ones i am going to go ahead and change them so i have all the same kind of pads on all the wheels now here you can get a little better view of what i was talking about about this being uh the kind of piston you have to twist you see how this is kind of got this cross section here they do make a special tool for that 
But I'm thinking I probably have something that I'm going to be able to get in there to turn without stripping this all up. But it will not work just to take a seat clamp and to try to compress it that way. In fact, that'll damage it. You have to get in here and you have to turn this in order to reset that caliper piston back in to allow room for the new brake pads. So, that actually wasn't too awful bad. It's a little more involved than the fronts, but it's easily doable. Uh, in order to get this one bolt out here, I did actually throw the, this back inside here, set it down there, and come in from the other side. That's pretty much the only way I could get into it, and that way I was able to get into it with my little impact back there. So, I'm going to go ahead and see if I can find something to twist this back and check back in with you. Hi right, guys, I actually found this chisel I have. Actually, it works quite nicely. Uh, make sure what I did, because you don't want to ruin this rubber seal around in here, and it, if it's all dirty and muddy, it will want to stick and just twist. So I just sprayed her down with some WD-40 to allow that rubber to, to slide as we spin. And then we just want to turn her counter clock, or clockwise, excuse me, you want to turn it clockwise to set it in. And again, just be careful of that rubber. You don't want it to twist, and you don't want it to catch and tear, or else you'll get mud or anything else inside the caliper. So we're just going to give this some turns here till we get that back in even. And then we should be good to go. We'll just reassemble everything. And we'll be ready to hit the trail again. Alright, we got our brake pads in there, which can kind of be a pain to get everything lined up. But just take your time and they will eventually get to where they need to be. So now we're just going to turn this guy back around. Line her up. And find... Ouch. Take my head off the shock. And find my bolts. And get this bolted back on. There she's good and secure. We'll pump the brakes a couple of times. Check that she's working, we'll spin her at the brake and she stops. So we're good. So now all that's left for me to do is to put my shock back on and my wheel back on. Again, you probably don't have to take the shock up out of the way. I did that mostly so I could get in there to give you guys a better view. Would it help to get it out of the way? Absolutely. And it's only one bolt and you can just do like I did and swing it up and bungee it up out of your way. So you have this area in here to work with putting your new brake pads in. So yeah, it's a little more difficult than the front. But if you have a little patience, it's still easily, easily doable. Just remember, don't try to uh, press the piston caliper back in. You got to get something in there and actually twist it clockwise to wind it back in. If you try to force it with like a C-clamp like the front, you are going to damage it. So I hope if you're getting ready to change your brake pads, you found this video very helpful. Again, at 16,000 miles, here's what's left of my front brake pads not much is at all ah. three out of these four are pretty shot and this guy is getting way down there again my rears still have plenty of life left on them which is a good thing you don't have to change these as often but i wanted to make sure to have all my brake pads the same kind and not miss and match so i will keep these for backups in case something were to happen well, I'd say judging by these pads, we could probably go three or four on the front before we need to change the back. So even though these rears are a little bit more of a pain in the tuchus, they don't need to be done near as often, so yay for that. Don't forget to like and subscribe before you guys leave. I will leave links in my description below for everything I used today, from brake pads to tools, a lot of stuff you can find on my Amazon Influencers page and purchasing stuff from my influencers page helps to support Appalachian Mountain Rider so I appreciate that. The next time we uh, see this guy in the hillbilly garage we should be starting to work a little bit on our project build for Mighty Mouse. So very very excited for that. I know at the time of filming this Joe was ordering the stuff to make my long travel kit so very, very exciting. I'm super stoked to get that on there, especially to get those big old 32s on here. 
So now we'll have the stopping power to slow down and stop with those tires on there. And it's going to make this Pioneer 500 a very, very nice riding machine. Again, thanks for watching. Free to like before you leave. And until next time, keep on riding.